So today is the eighth sermon of the series, Allowing God to Work in Our Life. And today's specific title is to relying on the Holy Spirit. You know, because I'm worried that you might fall asleep during the sermon, I'm going to give you the answer from the upfront, in the from the beginning. You know, when does God work? The answer is this, simple. It's when Holy Spirit, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, that's when God works. You know, it's simple like that, but it's not easy. So I'm trying to share that with you today. And it is not hard, but I'm going to share that with you. You know, in this life, there is orders, right? In order for you to come into the church, you have to get out of the car, you have to open the door, you have to come through the door. In everything, there is orders, right? Especially things that are important, there is even more steps, more uh, orders that, you know, in everything in this world, there are steps and orders that God had arranged. So that's why Jesus says to the disciples, when Jesus, dis Jesus tells the disciples, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, you know, in everything, there is timing of, there is God's timing. When it's God's timing, God will give us the Holy Spirit. And through that Holy Spirit, He will rule over us and He will work it with our, in our life. So in other words, you know, as we live our faithful life, you know, we work really, really hard to fulfill our faithful life but then in our, in my ministry you know one of the person that is the most difficult person that I face is that this person individual a, a congregation member works really 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 hard they put a lot of effort but they want to do that they per, they're putting that own effort their own time and own effort instead of depending on the Lord and the Holy Spirit to guide him through that you know that's the difficult part that's the struggle part you know what you need to do as a believer you need to allow the Holy Spirit to lead your way you need to allow and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you that he will be the one to guide you and help you go through take the step one step at a time you know that's when Jesus tells the disciples he says do not leave the Jerusalem you know these disciples have met Jesus and have been changed but Jesus says um, you know, so the disciples, after 40 days of experiencing Jesus and working really hard, they were really, really sort of uh, high in their faith. But then Jesus tells them, do not leave Jerusalem just because you feel like you're all, all ready now. But don't leave until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And after the Holy Spirit comes upon you, then go out into the world, you know, into the Samaria, into the ends of the earth to spread God's word. You know, Jesus tells them to wait for the Holy Spirit. And that's why we need that Holy Spirit because the first and foremost, even, even Jesus received the Holy Spirit to do his work. Right? In, in, chapter, uh, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 22 to 32, it shares about a story about you know, people who couldn't speak and Jesus was able to allow them to be able to speak. Jesus healed the people who were possessed with, um, with the devil and was able to get that devil away. So these Pharisees who are jealous of Jesus, they started attacking Jesus, right? Because they didn't like seeing all the things that Jesus was doing. You know, the surprising part is that, you know, people... You know, it's kind of interesting how how these kind of exist in different cultures too. The same thing, right? Even in Korea, they have the um, the uh, I don't know the term, a person who you know chases out the devil, right? Like a sorcerer type of person who chases out the devil, right? There is even different groups of uh, sorcerers that chases out the evil you know if and then people go to that sorcerer to pay five hundred dollar to get that evil out right and then afterward and then you get the stronger evil that comes upon you so then you end up paying another thousand dollars to get that you know evil out of uh, that person so that's what people are saying in this in this uh, setting. Those Pharisees are saying, "Oh, you Jesus, you who put out the, uh, the the devil out of this person. In what authority are you doing that? Aren't you the aren't you the master of the devil that you are able to do that?" So that's what these Pharisees are, you know, claiming Jesus to be. But Jesus answers them. He says, "No, it is the Holy Spirit that is in me that I am able to do this. It is through the Spirit and through the power of God that He is able to do this." And it says.
It is by the Spirit of God that he drives out the demon, is what he says. And if you do not know that I am working through the Holy Spirit, then if you do not know that, then it is like you don't know who I am or you don't know the truth. What this means is that we as believers, we too need to be filled with the Holy Spirit in order for God to work in our life. You know, we do. We all, we also know the truth. And how did Jesus get born into this uh, world? He was born because he was uh, born through the Holy Spirit. You know, before Jesus received the Holy Spirit, he did not. Um, he did not start doing any of the miracles or any of the work of God until the Holy Spirit came upon him. So, to, we too. God wants to pour the Holy Spirit upon us and when we are filled with the Holy Spirit and the person who's filled with the Spirit, God will work through that person. That's what this in John chapter 14 verse 10 says, Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you I do not speak on my own authority, rather it is in the Father living in me who is doing his work. What when Jesus says the Father, what he's talking about is the Holy Spirit living in him. Do you believe that? This is the way that God works. This is his method. God at this moment, even today, He w He is pouring His Holy Spirit upon us. He wants to give us that Holy Spirit to us. And only through when we are filled with that Holy Spirit will we will be able to do the miraculously things. We will be able to do powerful things that God has wants to do in our life. He's just asking the the elder to cool down the room because it is kind quite hot in here. So sometimes we ask, you know, do I really have to be filled with the Holy Spirit in order to do God's work? And the answer is yes, you have to be filled with the Spirit. Now let me tell you why you need to be. First of all, it's because we are weak. We are human beings. We are weak. You know, even me as a pastor or any of the pastors in the world, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you are bound to fall. Right? There are so many church Korean, there, um, you know, you know, famous pastors in Korea who fall often time because they do not seek for God's Spirit and they're not filled with the Spirit. The second reason why we need to be filled with the Spirit is because this is the way that God works. This is the order that God works because we are weak. You know, I've served this 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 church for 30 years. You know, I've never seen a guy that I said, "Oh, this person will be so faithful even without Holy Spirit." I have never met a one person that I said will continue to do really good. You know, even with uh, without Holy Spirit, I've never met one person like that. You know, if you had not filled with the Holy Spirit, you cannot believe you cannot lead you cannot serve without the Holy Spirit because without the Holy Spirit you will not know who you are yourself you cannot you cannot um, build yourself up to do the God's work you know there is this uh, this Jewish person uh, back in the World War two days you know she was taken and was you know broken she was beaten she was raped and all these things and she went into prison you know and then in this you know afterward she started volunteering in this place where she was uh, giving the food to the prisoners of war and then she, from distance, met, saw a guy who beat her uh, up, right? She probably, the guy, you know, beat her to, almost to death. But this sister, but this person said, you know, as she was giving that food to this prisoner, you know, instead of, you know, hating him, she said, I forgive you, brother. I forgive you. You know, we listen to this, 
and we're amazed because it is not her effort. It is not because she is so good to forgive this person. It's because the Holy Spirit grasped her and allowed to give that forgiveness to this uh, German soldier who beat her back in the day. You know, this and she later also became a person who continued to serve with love and forgiven all the people in her life. You know, when we listen to these stories like this, you know, we're challenged, right? We, we, we get challenged and we're like, wow, so such love, loving person exists. And we're challenged to do the same, you know. We go back home and we're like, maybe I should, you know, love my wife better. I should, I should love my husband better. Maybe I should have forgiven my, my co co colleague or that other uh, deacon in my church that I hate. You know, maybe you're inspired to, to, to be able to ask for forgiveness. But then a day later, two days later, three days later, you kind of forget about that. And you start to loathe that person again, hate that person again. Why? Because you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes you take that step to, to ask for forgiveness, but then instead of asking for forgiveness, you end up fighting more with that person, right? You know, oftentimes that happens to us. You know, it's not just one or two times. It happens to us frequently. Why? Why does it happen? Because we're not filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, that's when we can truly forgive. When we, that's when we could truly love. But without the Spirit, we really cannot truly, truly forgive and love. And sometimes we hear about the scripture, the stories, right? You hear about Daniel who prayed so hard and so had a great relationship with the Lord, you know, to the point where he went into the lion's den and did not get killed. And you get inspired by that, right? You know, this, you know, this, one of this elder person uh, prayed this way. You know, one of the things I see in my ministry here. You know, oftentimes we're so excited, we get so uh, uh, emotionally and um, emotionally high after doing revival, right? And you know, we are so excited in our faithful life, but then once that revival is over, you know, nobody shows up to the the next day morning prayer meeting, and then it kind of repeats after six months same thing cycle over and over again why why does that happen you know that's because we depend on our own personal experience to try to do the thing with our own effort you know we depend on our own ability or power to do so instead of depending on the spirit to guide us you know we sometimes hear about a testimony that somebody received um, was so inspired with the spirit and then gave everything that they had and they offered you know their whole life whole bank you know they had everything and then sometimes we are inspired by those story and then we're like oh man i i also want to be the same and then you kind of open up your wallet but then a day later two days later you realize oh man oh i cannot do that because the quote unquote the reality hits you and you're like oh i can't give that all my offering you know after maybe you do get emotionally high emotionally um you know sort of challenged you know within that day but then two three three four or five days later you don't do it why because you try to do it with your own effort with your own desire with your own power god knows our weaknesses because god knows our weaknesses that's why he wants to give us the spirit holy spirit so that we will not uh, fall and fall short you know depending on our own power you know, sometimes we listen to some missionaries um, uh, testimony and then we get very emotionally moved you know we had one missionary who came and gave a sermon you know he reads the, the Bible so much you know at, to a point where he starts writing the Bible you know he could you can just write the first word of the first letter of the the verse and he can recite all of those verses and everybody is so amazed so challenged and so so um 
excited to see that and then they get challenged and they're like oh, okay I'm gonna start reading the Bible from the beginning to the end and then so you get challenged and you start opening the Genesis and you read from verse chapter 1 2 and 3 and then it kind of slows down and then you fade away by the time we get to ex Exodus or even Leviticus you you stop because you know why because it just lists all the numbers and and it just gets boring you, this happens over and over again because you're depending on your own effort because you were quote-unquote emotionally high and try to do it with your own effort instead of really being moved by the Holy Spirit instead of being really truly filled by the Holy Spirit when you try to do things by your own effort you are going to fail because you're weak and you need to let go of your own power of your own knowledge your own deed you gotta learn to let go without being filled with the Holy Spirit you cannot go to the ends of the earth without knowing Holy Spirit you, you may receive salvation you may um, be saved but you cannot live that powerful uh, you cannot carry out the powerful work of God that he wants to do being filled with the Spirit you cannot do that without the Holy Spirit. You may not know yourself. You might not know what my limitation is, what my ability is, how to protect yourself, how to serve the other people, how to serve your wife or spouse, how to serve your neighbor. You may not even know without being filled with the Spirit. That's why God pours his Holy Spirit upon us this is his method this is his order you need to remember why do you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because with our own power with our own experience with our own decision-making and deci uh, you cannot you are weak and again like I said the second reason why you need to be filled with the Spirit is because this is God's method this is the order and if you're doing the things without being filled with the Spirit, then that is illegal. You know, what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? What does it mean to be filled? It means that you do not depend on your own knowledge or your experience, but you're allowing the Holy Spirit to take complete control over your life being dominated by the spirit that's what being filled with the holy spirit is you know oftentimes we live this world and we are um we get into a situation where you feel you are um cheated and when you are cheated you're so angry you are filled with anger you know you want to do something against that other individual but i tell you what it means to be with, filled with the Holy Spirit it means you're allowing the Holy Spirit to completely dominate you, complete, have complete control over your life. You know, being filled with the Holy Spirit, there's two types of um, being filled with the Holy Spirit. There is a Greek word, the Plato, that is more that is an outward appearance of the Holy Spirit, outward physical, external um, appearance of being filled with the Holy Spirit. So that's Plato. And then there's an internal Holy Spirit, internal reflection of a Holy Spirit. That's the, um, that's the word Plaris. There's two types of, um, you know, being filled with the Holy Spirit, but you, bo you need to have both of those. Let's look at uh, Acts chapter 4.31. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. You know what this means? Right? This is when the the, the disciples get um, you know caught, they get into the prison, and then they are told, you know, if you don't um, you know um uh, go away from the word of God, we're gonna kill you. You know, but these disciples the saints basically were so filled with the Holy Spirit that they said, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're going to do to me. It doesn't matter what you're going to do. Whether, even if you kill me, I am. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit that they continued to speak out God's word boldly. That is the outward appearance of the, the Plato, the Holy Spirit, the external showing of appearance of being filled with the Holy Spirit. 
you know, I went to a conference in LA one time. You know, it was a city where a lot of the people who retired was living in that very beautiful city. And, you know, not the LA downtown area, but this is like the side of the LA where a lot of the retirees and a very beautiful scenic area. So I went there. And there was a small church uh, that had about 150 members. And out of the 150, maybe there was a couple of uh, retired um, pastors there. And one of the wife of the retired pastor came to me and asked a um, couple of questions. You know, she said that every Tuesday there is five members of the congregation who uh, who had a prayer meeting. And then one day, as they were praying, there was a big uh, earthquake. So they were all surprised. So they came out. They came out of that room because they were so scared of that earthquake. But when they came out, they realized there was no earthquake. There was no earthquake. They, they called the, um, the police. They called the local weather places. And then they found out that there was no earthquake. So then she asked me, what, you know, what happened? She asked me, you know what I answered her? I said, I don't know what happened. How do I know what happened? But in my inside, my heart, I said, you know, I don't know what happened, but that is what experiencing the Holy Spirit is. That is the outward experiencing externally, physically, right? Externally, they were experiencing the Holy Spirit. This is the Plato Holy Spirit. But then let's look at uh, Acts chapter 11 verse 24. He was a good man, full with the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great member of the people were brought to the Lord. So that being filled with the Holy Spirit, this is the internal, uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit internally. That is, what that means is uh, being in like-minded of Jesus Christ. That's what that internal Holy Spirit of being like-minded of Jesus Christ. In Luke 4, 1 says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Wherefore, right, when Jesus, um, you know, was going into the, the wilderness, he, it, the, the scripture says that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. And that led him to go. So this is the internal uh, Holy Spirit. So the outward, external Holy Spirit you need to have, as well as the internal, being like-minded of Jesus Christ. You need to have the Plato, the external uh, Holy Spirit appearance, so that you can show your love towards your spouse. You need to have that in order to serve the church. You need to have that to, to serve uh, the leaders of the churches right you are a light right when you are walking through the path because you are the light of the world you need to be brightening you need to show that light upon the world that's the external factor of the being filled with the Holy Spirit and showing it outwardly that is the Plato being filled with the Holy Spirit being that light physically appearing that way is that the only thing you need no you also need that internal holy spirit fullness being in like minded of jesus christ you know being you know if somebody curses at you you know cheats you and things like that but you do not get hurt you are not worried or you're not devastated because you're filled with the holy spirit internally right you do not get prideful you do not get hurt because you have the Holy Spirit in you and without it you get hurt without it you are cheated and you're um, devastated by that listen listen you need both of these Plato and Plaris So, as we try to wrap up, so how are we going to live this life? How are we going to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Right, if we look at the scripture, there are so many miracles where Peter was able to raise the person who was uh, lame, uh, who, was, who couldn't stand up, and was able to do that. 
So what do we need to do to be filled with the Spirit? What do we need to do first is you need to desire to have the Holy Spirit. You need to have that desire, desireness to have the Holy Spirit. And oftentimes we desire to have a good health. We desire to f uh, thrive in our businesses. We desire our children to be smart and become somebody famous or make a lot of money. You know, I'm not saying those are wrong things to be praying for. I'm not saying you shouldn't be praying for those things. But you should. Those are not the most important thing that you need to be praying for. As a believer, as a person of God, it is not only when you pray, it is not only when you worship, it is not only when you come to church that you feel like you're, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. It is every single day, in every single moment of your life, in your, in your businesses, in your daily life with your family, in your workload, you know, whatever, whether you're a student and studying, you know, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit in every single moment of your life. And you need to desire to have that Holy Spirit. You know, somebody, some one of the church members said, you know, you know, he was a he was becoming a very successful businessman. So I challenged him and said, you know, since you're doing so well in your business, maybe you should, uh, you know, close your store on Sunday and and you know, come because you don't since you're doing so well now. And this person said to me. Oh, does Jesus feed me? Does Jesus provide me with the money? You know, I was hurt. I was very saddened to hear that. You know, I, I challenge and I wish everybody will say that my business is thriving because I am daily being filled with the Holy Spirit and God's leading me through this blessing. Whether you are physically blessed or not, still desiring that Holy Spirit to guide your way, that is the most important blessing you will have. You know, you could even pray without the Holy Spirit. You could. You know, in Hindi, you know, they, you know, fast for like 10, 100 days and pray. You know, this is like unheard of. You know, how can you fast for 100 days? You know, sometimes in Christianity, we could, you know, people do fast for 40 days and, and, and pray. But listen, you could pray, you could you can spend all your time and effort in praying, but if you don't pray with the Holy Spirit, that is an empty effort. You know, even Jesus says in Luke chapter 11 verse 13, If you then, though you are evil, know how to give a good gift to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give you Give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. You know, you need to be praying for Holy Spirit. You need to be praying for the Holy Spirit to fill you. You know, before you ask for anything, what you need to be asking for is asking for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, this is hard. I hear your prayers, but this is hard. You know, oftentimes we do not ask that as a foremost thing but like I said everything is in order you cannot have a good great relationship with God and have a faithful life without being asking God for his spirit to guide you that's the first and foremost first step you know ask yourself what is your f most biggest desire that you have right now what it should be number one to be filled with the Holy Spirit and that being filled with the Holy Spirit being truly your priority that is the importance you know I'm gonna say something that might hurt you Oftentimes, people in this day and age don't want the Holy Spirit being filled with the life of being filled with the Holy Spirit as their priority. You know, honestly, unfortunately, that is a truth in this day and age. You know, do you truly want the Holy Spirit to be your priority? Being filled with the life, being filled with the Holy Spirit, is that your true purpose? Is that your true uh, priority in your life? 
I challenge you for that to be your life. Ask yourself, do you truly want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? And oftentimes we're afraid that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you're afraid. You know, some of us are worried that Holy Spirit is going to fill you. You know, somebody is praying in tongue and all of a sudden they stop praying in tongue because they don't want to get any deeper. But ask yourself, is being filled with the Holy Spirit truly your priority? And if that is your true pri priority, then let me ask you the second question. Are you ready to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you ready? So I'm going to pick on one of our elder. Elder, if I am going to come over to your house to do, you know, a, a worship service, wh what do you do? What do you, wh what kind of steps do you go through? If I'm going to come over to your house, maybe perhaps to do a sermon, you know, let me ask the wife of that elder, if you really truly desire, what you desire me to come over to your house, um, to, you know, to bless the house or whatever, what do you do? She, she answered that, you know, she will clean the house and prepare and, and, and prepare the house to receive the guest. You know, I'm, I'm just, you know, you know, you guys, you know, when you say, when I say me as a senior pastor, I'm going to come over to your house to, you know, to do worship or, you know, to visit, you know, oftentimes you guys are like, you guys are, you know, cleaning the house so effort fully like you guys are spending the time to clean the house that prepare the best meal and do all that stuff right who am i as a senior pastor i am nothing yet when you are preparing for a guest to come over you are preparing that house you're allowing that person to get guests to come right but if you truly are desiring god's holy spirit to fill you how can you be so filthy and not ready for it right you need to prepare your heart to receive the holy spirit if you truly want the Holy Spirit to fill you up, He is God, He is Almighty. How can you just live your life so, so, um, uh, just, just day to day, just as it is, right? How can you just take day to day and, and just live your life like as if you, it's your own? If you're truly desiring God's Holy Spirit to come upon you, and you're truly wanting that Holy Spirit to lead you to so that you can love your spouse, love your neighbor, serve those church, serve the the um, the poor. In order to do those things, you have to be prepared. You have to be filled with the Spirit and be ready for that. Now, when the disciples first were challenged and received Jesus and started um, truly accepted Christ right in the beginning they when they didn't know Jesus as a true and living God they ran away from Jesus they they you know they, they told you know other people that they did not know Jesus because they were not ready to die they didn't know Jesus but when they were truly they when they have truly encountered Jesus and when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they faced the death. They faced the consequences of death. Yes, st still, still, spread out God's word because they were ready. You know, again, I emphasize that one of the most important thing to do in your prayer is to desire the Holy Spirit to come and fill you. You know, in Acts chapter 1 verse 14, he said, They all joined together and constantly in prayer, along with woman and Mary and the mother of Jesus, and with them his brothers. They all came together and they prayed. You know, 
they come together. How do we receive the Holy Spirit? How do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? Is when you come in the place of worship. And when you come in the place of prayer. And two or more gather in Jesus' name. That's when you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how you receive it. Not when you're just... Um, just kind of walking the, the street and not really thinking about anything. You don't just randomly get filled with the Holy Spirit like that. It is through the time of prayer, being present in the time of prayer. The fourth and fourth thing you need to do is to await for the Spirit humbly. You need to wait for God's timing. Await humbly. If you truly want the Holy Spirit to be filling you up, you need to be patient. You need to wait. You need to learn to be patient. You know, back in Korea, you know, back in the days with with one of the revivals, they were like, Oh, if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, please come up to the front and just say hallelujah, hallelujah, really, really fast. And then they, you know, expect you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. No, that's not how it works. It's only through God's way. It's only through God's uh, method that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, you may wait 10 days. You may wait 100 days. You know, oftentimes we try to do, we try to put um, our time frame into God's time frame. And you you tell God to do certain thing in your own timing. You know, oftentimes you're, de you know, depending on your own thoughts or your own power and you're kind of limiting God in your own uh, t setting and time frame that's not what you can do there's orders that God has and you need to wait for God's time you know President Clinton after he retired as a you know he was uh, visiting Arkansas in one of the restaurants you know, surprisingly, one of the restaurant owner person or worker there happens to be a Hillary's, uh, you know, uh, boyfriend back in the day. You know, so President Clinton said to Hillary Clinton, you know, if you haven't met me, you probably, you probably be living here, you know, doing the, uh, the flipping the burgers here. And what Hillary Clinton and Hillary said to Bill Clinton, he said, no, no, no. If, if I had married him, he would have been the President of the United States. You know, it is not your thoughts, it is not your experiences, it is not just being fixated on your own thoughts, but it is only being filled with the Holy Spirit that things of the God's powerful things would work when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you need to await God's timing to take over you cannot do it in your own thought in your own power in your own method just because you have certain agenda you cannot do you cannot expect God to fit, need your own agenda it is God's agenda that things will work before as I conclude I want to share a story in London you know there was this one um, you know very poor weary guy who brought in a old violin to this violin store and said I am so hungry please take this violin for five dollar can please pay me five dollar so the owner of the violin store was like looking at this violin that was like so old and rotten and you know wore out he really didn't want to spend that five dollars to buy that but he did because you know as a good good heart he did and then later he realized that violin Inside there was a, in the dust, you know, there was a name of Antonio Stradivari. Antonio Stradivari. Does, does anybody know who that name is? <laughs> violinist? Any musical violinist? You guys know that name? So apparently, this was a very famous violin violin maker in, in you know, 1704. It, it says Antonio Stradivari, Stradivari 1704 written in that violin and he realized that this is not a five dollar violin this is a more than hundred thousand dollar worth violin you know this was a surprise obviously you know what we need to do you know you may look physically you may be worth in this world um you know you may have a job or you know has a worldly uh, success where your values are a certain certain amount 
But that's not who you are in God. You are worth far more than five dollars. You, when you are, you are a child of God. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. You are worth more than hundred thousand dollars. You are a child of God. But you, when you are received, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then you can perform. You can continue to live out the life that is worth far more than the what the world tells you are. That's why you need to be asking in your prayer request, you know, more than, you know, worldly success, more than the health and whatever you're asking, what you need to be asking is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you cannot, and being filled with the Holy Spirit, you should not quench the Spirit. You should not blaspheme the Spirit. You should not grieve the Holy Spirit. You should not speak against the Holy Spirit. You should not insult the Holy Spirit. But you should allow Him to lead you and in, in be filled, filling your life. That's what we need to be seeking. Let us pray.